Hello friends, I am Dr. Kulkarni and uh, the topic of presentation is data in research. The lesson objectives are that at the end of the lesson, the participants will be able to enlist the types of the variables. They would be able to describe the reasons of knowing the types of the variables and they would be able to describe the essentials of data editing. <clears throat> the common types of the data variables or the data are the quality to data and the quantity to data. So the data <clears throat> can come in either of the two categories, the quality to data or quantity to data. The variable can be either a quality to variable or a quantity to variable. A quality to variable is the one which is recorded as text in the master chart, whereas the quantity to variable is the variable that is recorded as number in the master chart. <clears throat> the examples of the quality to variables are the gender, the religion, the occupation. <clears throat> they are recorded as text and a quantity, the examples of the quantity to variables are height and weight. These are quantity to because they are recorded in numbers. <clears throat> the quality to variable or the data could be of two types. One is a dichotomous or multiple category variable. <coughs> Sorry. The dichotomous variable is the one which has got two categories. The gender, if it is recorded only as males and the females, is a classic example of this. But if the gender, in the gender, we have got the record of uh, the third gender also, then it becomes a multiple category variable. The example of the multiple category variable, which is also qualitative, is the religion because there, the, there are multiple categories of the religion like <clears throat> Hindus, the Muslims, the Christians, the Sikhs and the others. So religion would be a qualitative variable of a multiple categories. In the quantitative variables, we have got two types, what is the discrete variable and the continuous variable. A continuous variable is the variable which is recorded, can be recorded in fractions or in decimals, like the height and the weight. The height of an individual could be in decimals, the weight of the individual could be in decimals. Whereas the discrete variable is a variable which even theoretically cannot exist in, <coughs> in uh, the fractions or in the decimals, like family size for example, one cannot have a family with the family size 1.5 or 1.8, uh, it will always be in round figures. So a discrete type of variable is a quantitative variable which even in theory cannot attain a value of decimals or in the fractions. Another way by which the data can be classified is the data could be a nominal, ordinal, interval or the ratio scale. The nominal and ordinal are the subtypes of the qualitative variable and the interval and the ratio are the subtypes of the quantitative types of the variables. Let us see in details what do you mean by these. The nominal variable is a variable which in master chart is in the form of label or the text. Example is the gender or the religion. <clears throat> there is no natural order. If you try to sort, suppose you have got the data on the gender and uh, you want to sort this data, you cannot sort it on a numerical basis because it doesn't exist in the numerical form. Same is the case with the religion. The only way by which you can sort the data of the gender or the religion is the alphabetical order. Alphabetical order of the religion or alphabetical order of the gender. There is no absolute zero because the data nominal scale is not recorded in numerical form. So the question of zero uh, existing in the data doesn't arise. The descriptive statistics that can be used for summarizing the data on the nominal scale is the frequency or the count and the proportion. So one can find out how many were males, how many were females, how many were the transgenders. And in, uh, if it can be summarized in the form of uh, proportion, 
that is what was the proportion or percentage of males what was the pro percentage or proportion of females and what was the percentage or proportion of transgenders same with the religion so the descriptive statistics that can be useful in summarizing is the nominal type of data is the frequency of the count and the proportion or percentage ordinal data the data on ordinal scale in the master chart it will be recorded in the form of label or the text example is the severity of the disease grading of cancer the abgar score of the child or the grading of disability let us take an example of severity of the disease the severity of the disease could be mild moderate or severe but it will be recorded in the form of text or the label so it is an ordinal scale uh, and there is uh, there is a natural order that mild moderate and severe the natural order is there uh, apart from the alphabetical ordering you can also order it in the terms of severity same with the case of grading of the cancer abgar scoring and the grading of the disability so that natural order mild moderate and severe is there in severity of the disease in grading the disability and in grading the cancer so moderate will be more severe than the mild and the severe will be more severe than mild and the moderate so that is what we mean by the natural order and absolute zero doesn't exist because the data is recorded in the form of text and not in the form of numerical so therefore no question of zero existing in the data and the descriptive statistics that can be used for summarizing the ordinary scale data is the frequency or the count and the proportion like in the severity of the disease what was the number of the persons in mild category what was the number in the moderate category and what was the number in the severe category the proportion or percentages what was the percentage of mild cases what was the percentage of uh, moderate cases and what was the percentage of severe cases same with the grading of the cancer abgar scores and grading of the disabilities the interval scale data is uh, the data which in the master chart is recorded in the form of numbers or numericals the negative values can exist in interval interval scale data the negative values can exist so absolute value is the value from where the measurement starts so absolute zero doesn't exist because the values can start from a negative value therefore the absolute value doesn't exist in interval scale data this is because the negative values exist over here the example is the environmental temperature uh, temperature which is recorded in degrees fahrenheit so environmental temperature can exist in negative Uh, negative values it can exist in positive values also so the values can start from a negative value and that's why the absolute zero is absent in case of the interval scale data uh, and the statistics that can be used is in the form of median mean or standard deviation so that is the summary statistics that can be used as the mean median or the standard deviation like in the environmental temperature you have the data for uh, several months and the several days so we can find out what was the mean environmental temperature what was the median environmental temperature and what was the standard deviation of the temperatures recorded over that period of time so that is the summary statistics that can be used for summarizing the interval scale of data in which the negative values can exist and in which there is no absolute zero the ratio scale data is the data which in master chart can form uh, can be in the form of numbers the natural order exists because it is in numbers and the negative values do not exist and that's why the absolute zero exists the values start from zero the values start from the zero and that's because the negative values do not exist so the absolute zero exists in this case ratio scale the absolute zero doesn't exist in case of interval scale data so absolute zero will be there in the for in the ratio scale data example is the height weight and the hemoglobin the weight will start the when you stand on the weighing machine the minimum minimum uh, value that will be shown on the scale will be zero the height where if you start measuring the height the measurements will start from zero and then the heights uh, say Uh, say one feet, two feet, three feet, and four feet, or one meter, one centimeter will start. Same with the case of hemoglobin. So in the ratio scale, the negative values do not exist, and the absolute zero 
from where the value will start, measurement starts, will be there in case of ratio scale. And the summary statistics that is useful in summarizing is the mean, the median, and the standard deviation of that particular variable. So this is the summary of the scales of measurement, four scales of the measurement, the nominal, ordinal, interval, and the ratio. In case of nominal variable, the values are assigned in the form of label. The meaningful order doesn't exist. The only order that exists is alphabetical order. The meaningful interval doesn't exist because it is not in the form of numbers. Numericals are not there. Therefore, the ratios, the intervals, and the possibility of negative values all doesn't exist in case of nominal variable. In case of ordinal variable, the value assigned is in the form of label. But the meaningful order exists because it is an ordinal data. Other things, that is the meaningful intervals, the meaningful ratios, the, the absolute existence of absolute zero and the possibility of negative value is not there in case of ordinal data. In case of interval scale, the value assigned is a number for any, uh, any value, uh, for any case in the variable, the value assigned will be number and that's why the meaningful order exists. The meaningful intervals also exist and uh, the absolute zero doesn't exist in this data, but absolute uh, zero exists over here. The negative values, the negative values are present in ratio scale, but the negative values may not be present. So the possibility of negative value is there in case of interval scale data and it is not there in ratio scale data. So this is the summary of the uh, characteristics of the nominal variable, ordinal variable, interval variable and the ratio variable. The next question comes is to why we should know the scale of the measurement of a variable. The first reason is that the data presentation depends on the scale of the measurement of the variable. For example, if the data is on nominal scale, then the data can be presented in the form of simple bar chart. But if the variable is ratio scale, it will not be possible for us to present it on the simple bar chart. On the contrary, if the data is on ratio scale, it can be presented in the form of histogram. But the variable, if it is a nominal variable, it cannot be presented in the form of histogram. So the data presentation, type of data presentation depends on the scale of the measurement of the variable. Then the statistics permissible, we have shown that the count, the permissible statistics for nominal scale is the frequency or the count and the proportion. Similarly, the permissible statistics for ordinal scale is also the frequency and the count. But the permissible statistics for interval scale and for the data on the ratio scale is the mean, the median and the standard deviation apart from other statistics. You cannot have the mean in case of uh, the data on ordinal scale or the data on the nominal uh, data on the ordinal scale. So the mean, median and the standard deviation are for interval scale data and for the data on the ratio scale. So that, that's about the descriptive statistics permissible. Then the choice of the statistical test. In biostatistics, we apply various tests of the significance and the choice of the statistical test of the significance will also be dependent on the type of the variable. For example, if it is a nominal and the ordinal variable, we can apply chi-square test and the test of difference between two proportions. These are the statistical tests that can be available or used if the data is on nominal or ordinal scale. But if the data is on interval or the ratio scale, because the descriptive statistics permissible is mean standard deviation and the variance, we can have correlation and the regression statistics. We can have difference in two means or the ANOVA are the tests that can be applied over here. So difference of two means and the ANOVA cannot be available or cannot be applied for the data on the nominal and ordinal scale. Similarly, the proportions and the chi-square test cannot be used for the data on the interval and the ratio scale. So one must know what is the type of the variable in order to make the appropriate choice of the test of the statistics or the test of the significance 
uh, in uh, uh, the biostatistics. Then we should know about the pre about the elementary information on the data editing. The data editing includes the check for completeness, the check for the accuracy of the data, check for the illegal entries, the checks for the outliers, and the checks for the improbable entry. Now let us see what do we mean by the completeness. Completeness means one should not have the blanks in the data entry. There should be minimum blanks, there should be minimum nils, and there should be minimal I don't knows if the information relates to the knowledge uh, of the, it is measuring the knowledge of that person. So minimum blanks, minimum nils, and the minimum I don't knows is the check for the completeness. And uh, for a given variable, one can find out this uh, if the data is recorded in the statistics known as SPSS. SPSS gives uh, in the summary form as to how many blanks were there and how many nils were there uh, in that particular data. That information is available if SPSS is the uh, uh, software used for the data compilation. <coughs> Accuracy is the data that measures the quality or that gives you an idea about the quality of the data. So how accurately the data in, the, uh, in each variable was checked. So this could be done number one by sample checks. So suppose you have the record of the weight of say 1000 individuals, then we can have a second check on the sample of the individuals, say 10 or 100. So, so these 100 individuals, we will have the data of 1000 individuals and the data in the sample checks. And there should not be a major disagreement between the weight of that individual in the sample check and the weight of that individual when it was measured along with the 1000 individuals. If there is a major deviation, major difference in the values recorded in the sample check and the values recorded in the main data set, that means the accuracy of the data is doubtful. So this is one way. The so sample checks is another way of checking the quality of the data. The second is the standardization of the procedures. The procedure of recording of each variable must be standardized. And uh, when you have got all this information about the, all the variables, it is called as uh, uh, the standardization of procedures. <coughs> For example, weight, if the record is of the weight, then uh, we can lay down the procedures of the recording, ideal procedure for recording of the weight, that the weight should be recorded on, uh, not on the spring balance, not on the electric, electric uh, weighing, electronic weighing machine, but on the balance type of weighing machine. The weight should be recorded with minimal clothes. So such type of instructions could be given for measurement of each variable. So that is called as standardization of procedures. And uh, where the bunch of these instructions is there, this is called as SOPs, that is standard operating procedures. So for each variable, you give the instructions for measurement of that particular variable. So such procedures, when these are in place, the quality of the data is likely to be accurate. We can train the persons for measuring each variable and uh, that in inclusion of the training and uh, making them aware of the standardization of the procedures is uh, a step towards improving the quality of the data. The third method by which the data accuracy can be increased is uh, the quality of the data, uh, is, is called as the triangulation of the data. Triangulation is a procedure whereby, wherein a data about one variable is collected from more than two sources. So when the information or data about one variable is collected from more than one sources, it is called as data triangulation. For example, you want to collect the information about the date of birth or the age of the person. Age of the person can be ascertained from date of birth, assuring, assuring the, or uh, collecting the information about the date of birth of an individual. So the date of birth can be, information about the date of birth can be collected from the person by interviewing that person. It can be collected from the birth records of the local self-government and it can be collected from the records of the service records of the person or admission records of the students. So these are the three sources from which 
the information about the date of birth can be collected. And if you collect the information from all these three sources, it is more than one source. And that's why it is called as data triangulation. So data triangulation will improve the accuracy or the quality of the data. Not for all data you can have such type of facility that the uh, information is available from more than one sources. For all the data variables, such type of uh, facility of triangulation may not be available. But uh, when it is available, the facility of triangulation is available, it is one of the measures of improving the accuracy of the data. The second one is the illegal entry. Illegal entry is the entry that should not have been there. And uh, the illegal entries are avoided or can be ascertained or can be checked if you have got good inclusion and exclusion criteria. If the inclusion criteria is violated, that means that entry is illegal entry. For example, you have an inclusion criteria of age group of 15 to 45 years. So inclusion criteria mentions that only those individuals whose age is 15 to 45 will be included in your study. Now in the data at the age column, you find there is an entry of the age 13 years or there is an entry of age 55 years. That means this inclusion criteria is violated. So thereby you have found out the illegal entries. So illegal entry is ascertained with the help of inclusion and exclusion criteria and uh, finding out with the help of inclusion or exclusion criteria whether there are any illegal entries. So that is about the illegal entry. Improbable entries are the entries or the uh, variable entries which are impossible to occur. For example, you cannot have the cause of death as rupture of uterus in a male. You cannot have a four living children to a girl aged 15 years. So how do you ascertain about the existence of improbable entries? This is done with the help of two variables. Now in this case, the two variables that have been checked is the cause of death in the column of cause of death and in the column of gender of the person. So in the gender of the person, if it is male and in that column you find an entry like rupture of uterus, it is an improbable entry. In this case, second example, four living children to a girl aged 15 years. So here the variable checked is the column of living children, the number in the living children and the variable checked is the age of the that particular individual. So four living children, so four living, number of living children will be in the column of living children, number of living children. And the age will be ascertained from the column of the age. So simultaneously we are checking for two, two variables or two columns. In this case, the age and the number of living children. In this case, the cause of death and the gender of the person. So two variables are checked simultaneously. Then outliers are the extreme values extreme values and there is a definition of outliers in biostatistics given which is beyond the scope of this lecture but identification of outliers is again a task of task in, that can be included in data entries and the outliers are there for the data that is on ratio scale or in the interval scale and the graphical method of determining the existence of uh, outliers is the box plot so box plot is a graphical method with the help of which you can identify the outliers. So whenever the whenever a variable is in the ratio scale or in the interval scale, try to plot a box plot for that particular variable and you will find whether there are outliers or not in that particular for that particular variable. So th th that was about the uh, various ways of uh, anomalies that can enter in the data. So how we can find, what are the various methods by which these anomalies can be found out? One is by checking for blanks, nilers, don't know, with the help of statistical software like SPSS. So you can check for blanks, nils and don't know. So how many blanks were there? What was the proportion of blanks? How many nils were there and what was the proportion of nils? How many don't knows were there uh, in the data? Uh, and what was the proportion? And if this proportion is beyond an acceptable limit, then the entire data set will be a suspect thing. So uh, that must be checked. So check for blanks, nils and don't knows for each of the variable. Uh, that must be done. <clears throat> then the second thing is the range check, the minimum and the maximum value. So for example, in, in case of age group, 
we check for what was the minimum value and what was the maximum value. So that can give you an idea whether the such type of error like illegal entry has occurred. Now in this case, in this case the example was given of the 15 to 45 years of age group. So in this case if the age group, in the column of age group we find what is the minimum value and what is the maximum value. The minimum value should not be lower than 15 years in that case and the maximum value in that column should not be more than 45 years. If you find any value which is less than 15 years that is as a minimum value and you find uh, any value which is more than 45 years uh, as a maximum value then uh, you can say that illegal entry has cropped up in your record. So that is the usefulness of range check. So for each ratio and interval value, interval variable, you should also get information about the minimum and maximum values for that particular variable. So checking for range for the variables that are in ratio and uh, interval scale. Then count check. This is for count check is particularly for the variables that are recorded in the form of uh, nominal or ordinal scale. So for nominal and ordinal scale, you must check for count the totals. So in all tables, the count check for that variable should be equal. The count check should be equal. So for example, in case of males and females, if the total of males and females is say 100 and the total of religion, all religions is 98. Then we can infer from that, that in two individuals at least, the information about religion was not recorded or is not available. The same is the case with the subtotals. So you must check for the totals and the counts for all variables and they should tally over the range of the observations. One important, uh, uh, important technique is validation checks at the type of data entry. This is a facility available in MS Excel, which is a very popular database, data entry software or the data software, MS Excel. In that, if you make the data, uh, data entry in MS Excel and you use the validation facility, data validation facility in MS Excel, then invalid data, uh, the illegal entries will be awarded in the data set. And the last one is the use of software. If the data involves large number of uh, individuals, many variables are there and you have to check for many variables simultaneously, then it is better to use the software so that you can have the checks, something like on improbable entries, you can have the check on the illegal entries, all these things can be incorporated in the software. So, for small data, you can have validation checks at the data entry set and if the large data set is there, we can use the software and take the help of the persons of IT. The data, the raw data can be reduced so that meaningful inferences can be drawn from it. So the data reduction methods and the descriptive statistics must be known to you. Few data reduction uh, indices or few methods by which the data can be reduced must be known to us. Tables is one, one form of data reducing. So you can you have uh, tables for presenting the data. The rate ratio and the proportions are some of the indicators by which the data can be reduced. A rate is an indicator which has got a numerator, which has got a numerator, a denominator and multiplier. So these are used for the data on vital statistics like dates, births uh, and uh, fertility statistics. So we have got crude birth rate, crude death rate. So for that you can, date, you can reduce the data in the form of rates which has got numerator, denominator and a multiplier. In, in case of birth rate for example, we have got births, number of births in the numerator the total population in the denominator and the multiplier could be 1000 or 1 lakhs. So that is about the rate. Ratio is the product of division of x and y. So how much will be y if 
x is equal to 1 or 100 or 1000. So that is called as a ratio. Sex ratio is an example of that type of data. So x and y are mutually exclusive here. The number of males and the number of females. So number of males is in the numerator and the number of females is in the denominator. So both are mutually exclusive. So ratios are used for that type of data. And the proportion is one where the numerator is included in the denominator x upon x plus y so x is included in the denominator so that is called as proportion so what was the proportion of males so the males what is the for calculating the proportion of males this x is the number of males and x plus y is the total number so x and x plus y x in x plus y x is included so whenever such thing occurs it is called as proportion in ratio the numerator is not included in the denominator in proportion the numerator is included in the denominator so rate ratios and proportions are one of the ways or indices which can be used for data reduction then for quantitative data we can use the centering constants like arithmetic mean the geographic mean and the median calculation of arithmetic mean geometric mean and the median for the data which is on interval scale or which is on ratio scale the second thing which, which we can do for data reduction is find out the measures of variation and the measures of variation are the range the interquartile range the standard deviation the variance the percentiles and the 95 percent confidence interval so for ratio scale and interval scale data the data can be reduced with the help of by calculating the statistical indices like arithmetic mean geographic mean and the medium and the measures of variation like range interquartile range the standard deviation variance and the percentiles for the data on quantitative data on interval and ratio scale one can also give the 95 percent confidence interval for each of the variables so this finishes the presentation and uh, for further reading you can refer to these two books which are written by me the basics of research methodology which is published by paras medical publisher and it is available at this website you can have, purchase these books on online uh, the basics of biostatistics this is in second edition written by me this book is also written by me and is published by cbs publisher and it is available at these websites you can purchase these books from amazon also these books are available on amazon also so you can go to this, these websites or you can purchase on Amazon but you should search for the basics of research methodology in the book's name and in the author's column you should write this then you can go to this uh, you can purchase these books online you can contact me at uh, this email id drapikulpani at gmail.com if you have got any queries regarding this presentation so friends with this, I finish uh, the presentation and uh, thank you very much for patient listening.